Welcome, everyone, to the University of Rhode Island. I am kind of a Johnny Appleseed wannabe. But instead of apple trees, I propagate shade trees that are expected to survive in a hotter climate. My hope is that in the future, people will sit in the shade of a tree grown from a seed I planted. But I plant those seeds today in a gritty mix of grief over what we've done to our planet and concern for all of creation. Grief and concern may sound like strange ingredients for a recipe for hope, but hope is an alloy of many improbable ingredients. An alloy is an enhanced metal made by mixing ingredients. When you mix uh, iron with carbon, you get steel, an alloy that has changed history. Now, of course, hope is not a metal alloy, but it can put steel in your spine. I'm a professor, and my research has shown me that hope is a way of being in this world with all of those painful realities that do not meet what our communities and planet need. Hope is a way of facing those realities with a pragmatic determination to do whatever is ours to do to make things better. Those are some of the improbable, ingre oh, excuse me. For that to happen, all of us will need steel in our spines and generosity in our hearts. Those are some of the improbable ingredients of hope, pragmatism, steel in the spine, and generosity. About 20 months ago, I was working with my dear friend, Dr. Charlotte Karam of the American University of Beirut. We were editing a collection of articles on responding to disasters and crises. One week, we were doing what academics do, editing and writing. And the next week, we found ourselves in the midst of just such a calamity. August 4th, 2020, hazardous materials left in a warehouse by a corrupt government exploded. And instantly, 300,000 people were homeless, 7,000 were injured, and at least 218 were dead. Thankfully, my friend Charlotte was traveling at the time, so she was not in the business school when the windows were blown in by the blast. But she was on the phone with a beloved colleague at the business school at the very instant of the blast, so her experience of it was immediate and terrifying. I called her as soon as I heard the news, and within a week, I was part of a grassroots initiative called Khadit Beirut. That is Arabic for Beirut has been shaken. We call it KB for short. Its mission is to help communities rebuild and recover from a catastrophe so great that it has changed every aspect of life in Lebanon. You might ask how a professor in New England could be of help. The fledgling organization wanted someone to help them document their experiences through talking with them about their strategies, successes, and setbacks, and capturing lessons that could be shared around the world with people to help them get through similar crises. So for the last 20 months, with my colleague, Dr. Sean Scott, I have been collecting regular interviews by Zoom with people doing the work on the ground. Initially, the people of, K of KB were traumatized, enraged by their government, or at their government, and frightened of what would happen next as the country slipped into economic collapse. But they were also determined to apply their expertise to rebuilding schools, clinics, and businesses, and helping the communities deal with the toxic consequences of the blast. Trauma, rage, expertise, determination, these might sound like strange ingredients in a recipe for hope, but when you think about hope as a way of facing the realities of our world with a commitment to making things better, these are not strange ingredients. Hope is an alloy of many improbable ingredients.
The day after the blast, the founders of KB, many of them professors at the university, started to pull together a circle of scholars and experts who were determined to put their expertise into action. Coming together, they found solace. They felt seen rather than invisible. This bolstered their hope and their determination. And they made expertise in action their motto. And in contrast to the corrupt government, they made accountability to the communities a guiding principle. Solace, visibility, accountability. Hope is an alloy of many improbable ingredients. When I started, I knew almost no one in Beirut. But I listened to their stories, and we reflected together. And I became party to their hope. They showed me that in dire circumstances, a community of hope can help people like you and me bring our best selves forward with a good deal of steel in our spines. Now, steel can rust. How can we be sure that hope will not rust? When you ask the people of KB, they say that hope stays strong when there are good measures of community and action in the mix. But again, my research suggests to me there are other essential ingredients. Our shared human invulnerability. Our painful recognition of realities we want to change. Our need to help. And our determination to do whatever is ours to do. In our times, we face difficult and uncertain work and challenges that are nearly unimaginable. But these times are also showing us that we have capacities we may not have known we have. Communities of hope make their own alloy with whatever is at hand. They find the ingredients all around us and within us. Thank you.